back at it again. We've got a video here with Walter Williams, uh, who is somebody that I kind of dabbled into a little bit last year. Haven't really checked out any uh, content with Walter Williams in quite some time. But actually, I think I learned about him from checking out Thomas Soul. Shout out to Thomas Soul, wherever he may be. An absolute living legend. I would love to interview Thomas Soul. Uh, I doubt it's going to happen at this point. I haven't. Have, has anybody heard from Thomas Soul or knows what's going on with him? I know he's up there in age. I think he's like well into his nineties. I believe. I believe he's in his nineties at this point. Let me know in the comment section. Has anybody heard what's going on with Thomas Soul? Shout out to the brother. I would love to interview him, but. We got a video with Walter Williams today discussing the black community. And if you know Walter Williams, he, he going to speak the truth. So like, share, comment, hit that subscribe button. If you are new, please make sure you're still subscribed to the channel too. I've been unsubscribed from certain channels. So make sure you're still subscribed here with your notifications still turned to all. And if you would like to help me out even further with the YouTube algorithm, watch until the very end. Helps out tremendously. I would really appreciate it. With that being said, let's dive in. I believe, if I'm not being too chauvinistic, I believe it's safe to say that black Americans have made the greatest gains over some of the highest hurdles in the shortest period of time than any other racial group in the history of mankind. Now, now you say, well, what's the evidence for that? Well, if you added up the, the earnings of black people each year and just thought of black people as a nation, and you looked at the GNP of black people, it would turn out that we would be the 13th or 14th richest nation on the face of Earth, coming in just behind Switzerland or Canada. Uh, black Americans are some of the world's most famous personalities. Black Americans are some of the world's richest people. Uh, it was a black American, Colin Powell, who was the uh, uh, commander of the world's mightiest military. Now, in 1865, Neither a slave nor a slave owner would have believed these kind of gains would be possible in just over 100 years, if ever. Now, that speaks very well. That speaks very well of the intestinal fortitude of the people. But just as important, it speaks very well of a nation in which. Yeah, I mean, and I heard this from Thomas Sowell or not, not Thomas Sowell, excuse me. Um. Oh, uh, crap. What's his name? Uh, Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas. He's a motivational speaker. And I believe a preacher as well. But he said, he said, you can't tell me that our people, he's a black guy. And he was speaking to black youth at this point in time. I guess I have to add that in when I say what I'm about to say. He said, you can't tell me that our people, uh, you know, got shipped from overseas to a foreign land into slavery right survived survived all of that just for us to be crying and complaining today just for us to be crying and complaining today our ancestors survived all of that all of the atrocities right including on african soil as well there's a reason why we were sold into you know, in, you know, to come over to foreign lands. There's a reason why that happened. It wasn't all sweet in Africa either. Survived all of that. Just for us to be weak and crying and complaining today. Really. Really. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just I just remembered that, uh, you know, when, when he was when he was saying, you know, the people back in the day, the slave owners wouldn't have expected people to succeed after not being able to read not being able to write not having any formal education of any sort of any sort black people rose out of that only for leftist democrats to come in 
and start hand feeding folks, creating this dependency. Right? I mean, I'm just saying. You see it. When you create dependency, you create a, a, a group of individuals who no longer strive for anything, who no longer push for anything because they're being handed it. If I'm being handed, if somebody's just giving me, right, I don't know, a million dollars a month or something crazy, you know, a million dollars a month is, I mean, listen. You wouldn't, you're not going to be the richest person in the world with a million dollars a month, but you're going to be pretty darn wealthy. You're going to be pretty good, you know, $12 million a year minus taxes, you know, depending on what you could do if we, you know, right? <laughs> Still, you're going to be pretty well off. You think that person is going to try really hard to be successful? No. Person's getting handed stuff all the time. Government this, government that, government paying for this. Oh, I can sign up for a government phone too. Oh, government, government stepping in over here. Government, what I got to do? I'm chilling. I'm cool. Government paying for everything for me. Just saying, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm no professional when it comes to all this, but you know, it's, it's obvious. But just as important, it speaks very well of a nation in which these gains are possible. That is, those gains would not have been possible anywhere else on the face of Earth except the United States of America. Thanks. Now, now there, there are problems that remain. That is, these, some of these gains have been elusive for a significant portion of the black community, but it has nothing to do with racial discrimination. That is, uh, uh, one devastating uh, thing that's happening in black communities is the high Ill illegitimacy rate. Now, uh, but however, that has nothing to do with racial discrimination. Uh, that is, uh, matter of fact, illegitimacy rate among black teenagers in 1918 was less than that, than that among white teenagers in 1918. Mm -hmm. In fact, in uh, there's another big problem the breakdown of the, of the, of the black family uh, and they won't tell you that statistic that statistic though they'll never mention that one say, say, say that again for us brother in 1918 in fact among black teenagers in 1918 was less than that than that among white teenagers in 1918 in fact in uh, there's another big problem, the breakdown of the, of the, of the black family. Uh, and probably breakdown is not the proper word. It means, uh, I should say, not forming in the first place. Uh, and this is entirely precedent, that unprecedented. That is, the only 40% of black kids live in two-parent families. Now, back in 1925 in Harlem, 85% uh, of black kids live in two-parent families. In 1870 and 1880, in cities like Cleveland, Detroit, and Philadelphia, you found numbers like 70 to 85 percent of black kids living in two-parent families. Now, how do you explain that? Can you say that there was not as much racial discrimination in the United States in the late 1800s? Nope. Or the early 1900s? No, that doesn't cut water. Uh -huh. uh, the, the discrimination just plain cannot explain. It cannot explain. Leftist policies explain the high crime rates, which are devastating to the black community and black people uh, huddled in their homes at night, living under conditions. Many leftist policies, crime rate, not wanting to arrest people and throw them in jail. Right. Leftist policies, the destroying of, of, of the black family, <laughs> paying people more when the when, when the father isn't home, destroying the leftist policies. I mean, you could tie it back to them. At every times turn. under conditions in poor neighborhoods that that the average American wouldn't believe or tolerate. I mean, for example, in Washington, D.C., mothers serving their children their meals on the floor so as to avoid stray bullets or fearing to come to the window because of stray bullets, uh, worrying about whether their kids are going to get home alive when they went to school. And it's not the it's not the Klan riding in the neighborhood uh, 
uh, uh, causing this kind of mayhem. Facts. You cannot not attribute it to discrimination. Truth hurts. Truth is the truth, right? You know, and, and it all ties back to leftist Democrat policies. Just is what it is. Just is what it is. Got to call a spade a spade. Leftist policies always trying to hand something out. Hand something out every, at every single turn. Oh, hand out here. Hand out there. Hand out here. Hand out there. Like, that's just ridiculous. And I saw a, uh, I think there was a recent survey that said uh, a lot of the youth, a lot of the younger folks, blame Republicans on not getting uh, student loan rep repayments or uh, loan forgiveness. The left is brainwashing some young folks. A lot of them believe that crap. That they're owed to have their loans, their student loans forgiven. We all owe them that. I mean, my goodness. My goodness. And it all starts with the classroom in, in terms of that. But in terms of the black community, it starts at home. It starts at home. And don't, like I said, don't let me become president. Because I'm cutting off a lot of this government funded this a lot of this government funded stuff all of us being cut off hey if you're gonna have a kid with somebody you better make sure they're gonna be there okay now I understand situations and circumstances happen but to have the numbers as low as what they are as far as you know kids growing up in a fatherless home without their dad at home oh no nah, y'all y'all gonna have to zip it up wrap it up cut it off i i don't care what you do but you better do something because this ain't gonna cut it don't don't come don't come to Uncle Sam looking for a handout. Uncle Uncle Sam is gone. <laughs> Uncle Sam ain't home. Don't come a knocking. All right, do not come a knocking. We ain't got nothing for you. Figure it out. Call your baby daddy. Okay, call your baby daddy. Take him to court. Get the money from him. He the one that did it to you. <laughs> you know, seriously though. I mean, this stuff is just out of control, man. Out of control. And it's once again, it's leftist policies because he talked about the crime as well. What do leftists love to do? Not lock people up. They love to lock Republicans up and try to lock Uncle Trump up. But they don't lock up, you know, uh, uh, these these leftists in these cities that are on a rampage. And if they do lock them up, they let them back out. <sighs> Stuff's ridiculous, man. Shout shout out to Walter Williams. Rest in peace, my brother. Um. And yeah, y'all let me know if you've heard anything from Thomas Sowell recently. Let me know. Peace and love. I'm out.